Panasonic S1 is the first mirrorless full-frame camera from Panasonic. Many GH5 users like me wondered if this would be a good upgrade. I used the S1 for several months now on paid client shoots and I can give you my honest opinion if this camera is worth upgrading to. At the end of the video I will also give you my honest opinion how I think this camera compares to the S1H or the S5. It will also be very video centric since I don't do photography stuff at all. And I got my camera body very cheap for only 1600 bucks second hand, so it's a real bargain. First thing you will notice as an MFT shooter is that this body is enormous. It's very big. Uh, maybe it's just my small hands, but it's also very heavy. Um, I really like the button layout. It's really nice and you feel right at home coming from the GH5. What I don't like is the very squishy shutter button. I often want to half press the shutter button and I accidentally start recording. The viewfinder is great, the best I've ever used. And the tilt up and flip screen is a very interesting solution, maybe better for photographers. I don't really like it. I think it's very slow compared to a flip out screen. The body is my first downside of this camera. It's very chunky and gigantic. And for me, I often leave the camera at home and use my GH5 instead because I think it's so heavy and cumbersome to use while shooting. Maybe it's not a problem for people that are a little stronger than me and have bigger hands, but for me it's an issue. When it comes to autofocus I sadly can't report anything about that since I don't have native glass and I use the Sigma MC21 converter to adapt my EF full frame glass onto this camera. This adapter only gives me single shot autofocus and it doesn't work very well. It hunts a lot and misses the focus quite often. And I only stick to manual shooting. So if you are a manual shooter like me, you won't have that headache. When it comes to battery life, I think it's really good. It uses those very big batteries and the battery life is about the same as the one on the GH5. It lasts for one to one and a half hours. So if you're shooting on and off, it's not that really big of a deal. But if you need long recording times, like during a wedding ceremony or interviews or such stuff, I would advise to buy the battery grip for longer battery life. When you install the Vlog update onto the S1, it's very similar to the bigger sibling, the S1H. It features 4K internal 10 bit up to 30 frames per second, and you can shoot externally up to 4K 60. It's a pity that you can't record 10 bit internally, but having the option externally is also very nice. There is also no all eye recording option, only long gop, but in my opinion, the long gop codec is sturdy enough for heavy grading and I never had an issue with that. Sadly, the S1 don't feature two SD card slots. It features a SD card slot and a XQD card slot, which also supports CF Express. It's a pity I don't use XQD cards. I think they are too expensive, but Panasonic already addressed it on the newer S1H. The stabilization performance is very close to the one of the GH5. I would say it's a touch better on the S1, but this could be because the camera is heavier and bigger and therefore gives uh, physically a better stabilization out of the box without any in-body image stabilization. But it's great to see that you get the same stabilization performance that you are used from the GH5 on a big full frame body. Now let's talk about the image quality. The sharpness is very good. 
it downsamples the 6K image from the sensor to a tech sharp 4K image and also Full HD is very nice. Uh, compared to the GH5, I didn't notice a big sharpness difference. The S1 is maybe a little bit sharper, but from my tests, I couldn't see that big of a difference. When it comes to slow motion, the S1 has its own menu that shows several options of slow motion, not like the GH5 in which you could choose different recording modes and variable frame rates. So it's not as flexible and there are also some strange choices so on my european model i'm not able to choose 180 25p i'm only able to shoot 180 frames per second in 30p which leaves me to conversions and that's a hassle i didn't have with the gh5 the slow motion quality on this camera is okay it gets worse at 100 frames per second and even worse with an additional crop at 150 frames per second Compared to the GH5, I think the footage looks worse on the Panasonic S1. The GH5 certainly has more sharpness and more detail. In 4K, the rolling shutter, of course, is more severe than a Micro Four Thirds camera, but it's not as bad as I expected. Uh, it gets much better in Full HD. The GH5 certainly is better in 4K, but in Full HD, I don't see that big of a difference. Now let's talk about dynamic range. This is a full frame camera that features the full V-Log profile. So it's not the smaller compressed version of the same profile that you find in the GH5, the V-Log L profile. For me, it's important that I see a difference when I work on real shoots in the real world. I noticed the difference coming from the GH4 switching to the GH5 and there is also a visible difference while shooting between the GH2 and the GH5. But when I switched from the GH5 to the S1, I didn't recognize the difference so much. This could be because the VLOG L is good enough for most shooting scenarios. So despite this being certainly a camera that has one stop of an advantage, especially in the shadows, I never find these situations that are so extreme that I would need the additional dynamic range. When it comes to low light, I did a very in-depth video comparing the S1 to the GH5, but I will give you a brief summary. You get a very nice image quality from both cameras. They are absolutely comparable from the base ISO up to ISO 3200. But up from ISO 4000, this camera is much better because it has a dual gain circuit, which means there is a second base ISO at ISO 4000. So if you need those extra ISOs up from ISO 4000, this camera is much better, but, but between the base ISO and ISO 3200, there is not that big of a difference. The camera has a mic and headphone jack, which is nice, but it also has the ability to use the GH5's XLR adapter, which I'm using right now on my GH5. It gives you the possibility to use two XLR inputs with phantom power and you can really get professional great audio with this adapter, which is very nice. The full frame sensor gives you the possibility to shoot in various crop modes. This camera has three crop modes. First in 4K, you can shoot in either full frame or APS-C. In 4K 60, for example, you are stuck with APS-C. And in Full HD, you are able to get the full frame recording, the APS-C recording and a one by one pixel readout. Just be aware that if you use the one by one pixel readout that you only use the base ISO and don't go higher. If you want to know more about that, please check out my in-depth video where I compare the noise in the various crop modes of the Panasonic S1. It's great that you stick around in this review for so long, but we have to address the elephant in the room. And that is, is this camera even relevant after the Panasonic S1H and Panasonic S5? I think it is. For example, compared to the S1H, the only differences are the flip out screen, the 6K internal, the all eye modes and the ProRes RAW capabilities. Other than that, the image quality is completely the same. And if Panasonic didn't lie to us, we will get the external ProRes RAW recording capabilities soon enough. 
which in my opinion makes the Panasonic S1H a little bit overpriced. And the Panasonic S1H seemed to be a compromise between the big Panasonic S1H body and the GH5 body. It has a flippy screen, which is great, but there are two deal breakers for me. First of all, the micro HDMI connection is not a secure connection at all. I would never trust it on a professional shoot. And there's also the possibility of overheating. I couldn't imagine that my camera overheat during a wedding ceremony. That would be one of my worst nightmares. So if these things are not an issue for you, I think the Panasonic S5 is a better buy. But if you need a secure HDMI connection and no overheating issues, I think the Panasonic S1 would be better. As you already noticed, my biggest gripe with this camera is its big body. Despite being the camera with the better low light and the bigger dynamic range, I don't see any advantages over using this camera over my GH5. I don't really care for the so-called full frame look because I can get the full frame look with my GH5 and the Metabond Speed Booster and Fast Glass. For me, it comes down to flexibility. With the GH5, I can go small with some tiny micro four thirds lenses, but I can also go big with monitors and rigs and big fast full frame glass. With the Panasonic S1, I'm stuck with big. But I think the S1 is a great camera. It delivers outstanding images for a decent price. For the price of one Canon EOS R5, you can pick up two of these. You can capture good low light images in Vlog 4K 60 frames per second. And I'm very thrilled to see the ProRes RAW update, which in my opinion puts this camera right up to the Panasonic S1H. But I still take the GH5 on most of my shoots because it's a better, more pleasing shooting experience and the image quality holds up after four years. So if you are a GH5 or G9 shooter and ask yourself, should I upgrade from this camera to the S1? I think you are still good to go. But if low light is an issue for you and you don't want to pay the premium price of the Panasonic S1H and need a full secure HDMI connection with ProRes RAW recording capabilities, I think you should go with the Panasonic S1. But what about you? Do you own the GH5 and do you think the S1 is a package worth upgrading to? I certainly still have my doubts about that. Let me know in the comments down below. And if you like this video, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel so I can make more videos like these and help the community. I hope you have a nice day and create something extraordinary.